The brain is a, like a machine. Those are the individual cells of the brain. And they are all connected like a circuit in a computer. So our brain has, is a machine. And trauma is stored in our brain depending on the, the properties of the machine. Certain machines have more ro are more robust and can handle more, I mean, you think of a car. You know, you don't take a uh, Nissan Elantra four-wheeling. You're going to the, the, bust the axle or something. And you, but if you take an, you know, a, a Humvee or, um, or a Jeep, you can go four-wheeling. You know, everyone's brains have physical properties, and, and the physical properties are the same in how the brain works, it's, except, as I talked about before, there's vulnerabilities. So all of this connects. The brain is an incredible machine that has um, evolved to make us safe in an environment. Um, and it evolved in order to help us survive um, um, environments that if without the evolution we would have perished. We are number 300 and I'm, I'm guessing this is probably close of a hominid. Hominids are the species of man that came from um, an ape. It's when we first started to have human-like qualities. A hundred, uh, hundreds of those, they didn't make it. They, they disappeared. And I'm not exaggerating about how many different, but ours, our species, um, uh, 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 Homo sapiens. Uh, we survived because our brain evolved to the environment and helped us be safe. We were not always the, the, the king of the jungle, the masters of our, our, our fate. So the brain evolved in ways to keep us safe. If the trauma is too much, the brain will register it if it knows what our thresholds are for vulnerability, our thresholds are for strength. Just like a circuit breaker that we have at home, um, if there's too much electricity, it knows, depending on the wattage or amperage, the circuit will go offline because it knows that amount of electricity will blow up and, 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 and there'll be a fire in the house. or our brain has self-protecting mechanisms. Trauma spikes that the brain cannot imagine, uh, manage um, creates um, a message to the brain that it has to do something in order to uh, make it not fall apart. It is like the, the brain has its own internal computer system that always watches how to, it to say, keep safe. And that is not conscious. That is all done behind the scenes. So the brain avoids system overload. It, av it, av it, it avoids blowing a fuse, or better yet, a system crash. And here is a, f um, an, a fuse blowing, a four amp fuse, which means that if the electricity, and I, I don't know much about electricity, so I'm gonna pretend I'm right. If, 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 five, if five amps of electricity gets thrown in there, it's gonna blow, because it could only handle four. Well, each one of us have our own circuit breaker of sorts where, um, where it knows when it's going to go off or on. So when I, when I run my air fryer and my convection oven and something else in the kitchen, it goes off. Some people, when they run their blow dryer and the microwave at the same time, it goes off. It's like the, the circuit breaker knows how much it could handle and what it can't before it takes it offline. Our brain is the same. It has a self-protecting mechanism, and it knows what it can and can't handle. It knows that it's better to blow a fuse or have the circuit breaker go off so it can be taken offline so you can like fix the problem. And usually it's a frayed wire or something like that. Um, and so 
using this as an analogy, when trauma is too big, the circuit breaker goes off and we disassociate. The brain has its own little monitoring system and it says, can't do that, can't handle that. We have to take that from conscious mind and move it somewhere else and take it offline. Because if that person remembers this, it will be too much. That's why people cannot talk about what happened to them in the war, why they blank out or forget if they were raped, why they blank out if they were robbed at gunpoint or any other, and attachment trauma. That is why people don't remember attachment trauma. They can barely recall it because the brain decided it was too much. So evolution, we survived because it figured out how to, uh, what to do if we blow a fuse. And what did, the brain uh, knows what to do if it believes it will destruct. It takes memories it, um, and it moves them offline so that we don't remember, so we don't have to deal with what the brain says is too much for us. It moves it somewhere else. So, and, it, and the result of that is a disassociation. Um, which means it's invisible, it's not accessible. Um, but the nature of disassociated trauma is it's still around. It's still in the background. It plays out in our relationship choices, our human magnet syndrome um, urges. Chemistry, that love-struck codependence and narcissist experience when they first meet, is the human magnet syndrome. Once together, these opposite but perfectly matched lovers are bonded together in a breakup resistant relationship. The human magnet syndrome begins like an enchanting fantasy, but later unfolds into an endless seesaw of hope and disappointment. Predictably, the soulmate of the codependent's dreams transforms into the narcissistic cellmate of their nightmares.